This is Lyme Regis fossils on YouTube, our longer fossil hunting videos. Look at that nice Arniosteros bodleii bed. You can see an ammonite that I've just chipped out of this limestone rock. You can see I lined it up along the line of weakness, which was the fossil keel of the ammonite protruding out of that rock. I've got a nice Arniosteros bodleii ammonite and that lovely Euagasiceros ammonite there. Follow us as we head out along the Jurassic coast through to the west of Lyme Regis. In my previous YouTube videos, you've seen me do a lot of sieving in metal rubbish on the 2008 Lyme Regis landslide. Have a look at all this metal I find on the beach out here. Well, one lady said to me when I was doing some sieving, here's a nice piece of lead I've got. I'm gonna take that whole chunk back and recycle that, get that poisonous lead off the beach. The lady said to me while I was sieving, can't you take some of this metal rubbish home with you? Well, quite frankly, no. I take lead back with me all the time. It's poisonous. I get that lead off the beach. That's one thing I've done for many years now. Carried lumps of lead, really large pieces off the beach to rid them from the beach. But this rusty old metal a lot of it. Well here it is, the land that time forgot, an area where a lot of people don't visit. I like coming along here once in a while to see the geology, pick up a bit of driftwood. I don't do any sieving or looking for the rocks along here at low tide. I just come along and see the movement in the cliffs, see what's been happening. It's a real fun venture but I'm going to get back into Pinay Bay and show you some fossil collecting in a bit at low tide. Some really big rock falls from the heavy rain we've had this winter that have come down the cliffs. Wow, I'm stunned. Look at this huge amount of cliff falls that have happened here in the chalk, falling down here onto the beach. Looks like a lot more to come with all the cracks. You can see a lot of cracks up there. If I show you up into the back there of the cliffs. Wow. Well, I'm heading back towards Pinay Bay now along an area called the Slabs. You can see these ledges and a lot of the ledges have these lovely Areatites Bucklandi ammonites in eroded by the attrition of sand and sea. They look lovely on the surfaces of these limestone beds. And as I walk back, I'm gonna look along the beach at low tide, pick up some driftwood, maybe even some fossil wood. Some fossil wood from the Cretaceous era. You can see some Teredo borings in that. You see these Rochelaria, they look like ammonites. They're all over the beach and fun to leave for other people to see. There's some really quite beautiful rock pools in this area. Here's an ammonite, a large ammonite that's been split in half by the sea's actions, breaking up these limestone plates on the beach. And as you walk down through this section, you'll see some marvelous big Cretaceous rocks that are balanced on the edge of these tilted slabs of limestone. And you can see how precarious their position is at that angle. You can imagine a big sea getting up there and sweeping them off one day. And here's a bit of the actual limestone cliffs that you can see the direct runoff coming through off the cliffs onto the beach. And you can see some of the water percolating through the cliff itself. So I'm heading back along towards Pinay Bay, as I've said, that's why I'm gonna look 
for fossil ammonites that I am going to collect the Arneosteros bodleyi ammonites. I'll see what's fallen down from the high heights there onto the beach at low tide. A paraglider is just coming into view there over the landslide and you can see those big sort of pterodactyl like wings that they have and uh, it's amazing to think what a prehistoric scene would have been like. And it's not hard to believe what a prehistoric scene would have been like when you're out in these amazing areas of the Jurassic Coast. You can see that ammonite that's broken away from those beds down there in the distance. Look how far it's traveled up the beach with the longshore drift. It will erode away quite quickly, geologically speaking. Here's a stone face I found on the beach. I'm traveling light today with a smaller rucksack, trying to do a bit of distance and see if I can spot any of the nice fossils when I get back round into Pinay Bay. And that's not far from Lyme Regis. Lyme Regis, I'll look forward to getting back into in the evening after all this trek that I'm doing during the low tide part of the day. Imagine the geological forces to see these sedimentary layers do that here on the beach down at Charton Bay. I'm heading on to Pinay Bay now at low tide. These ledges are really scoured out here in the area of Charton Bay. You can see these tea green mulls and quite a bit of gypsum here on the beach, some retic material. Lovely to see those fossil rochelaria, they are not ammonites. And I'm heading off now, like I said, down to Pinay Bay. I'm going walking along Charlton Bay at low tide, right round into Pinay Bay, where I'll show you some actual fossil collecting in the bay itself. Well, here in Pinay Bay, I found a shard of the Arneosaurus bodleyi bed, and that shard must have broken off quite a big block, but I'm really quite happy to find this smaller piece with all those ammonites in. I line up the keel of the bigger ammonite there, that I point to, I line it up and then give it a sharp tap near that line of weakness, turn the hammer around, and now I've broken through that limestone rock to reveal those ammonites preserved in beautiful creamy calcite, the Euagasiserus ammonite, the one that's really quite plump and chunky. That's a real fun find, and I enjoy getting those particular ones. They're a rarer species to find in amongst the ammonite beds. So what a good day I've had. I'm heading back into Lyme Regis and you can see the setting sun there. I always try and visit the Mary Anning statue. Well, I've certainly walked a lot of miles fossil collecting today and so too would have Mary Anning, this famous fossil lady of Lyme Regis. Back here many moons ago, she would have gone out and found some amazing curiosities. Here is Mike Harrison. He's found a little ammonite you can see here, and it's one of his winter finds. I'm going to show you more of those at his pond very soon when I catch up with him.